Welcome to the two th April 10th, 2018 meeting of Pequannock Township Council. Ms. Marsh. In accordance with the requirements of New Jersey's Open Public Meetings Act, notice of this meeting was included in the annual meeting notice, which was filed in the office of the, ta office of the township clerk, posted on the bulletin board in the municipal building, published as a legal notice in the Suburban Trends newspaper, and distributed to all persons requesting notice in accordance with township policy. Please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a prayer and a moment of thanks for individuals serving our nation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Most gracious Providence, we ask that you bless this governing body with an abundance of wisdom and understanding so that every deliberation will result in actions which will promote the common good and the general welfare for all the people of the Quantic Township. Amen. 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 Clerk will please call the roll. Mrs. Florence Lynch? Here. Mr. Hurd? Here. Mr. Cole? Here. Mr. Phelan? Here. Mayor Winterfield is absent. Okay, we're going to abbreviate from the regular agenda and we're going to go to um, Ms. Marsh, the R2018-79. Can you please read that? This is resolution R2018-79, appointing Adam Brewer as township manager and approving the contract. Are there any comments on the resolution from council? Negative. Is there a motion to adopt the I'll these make that, I'll make that motion to approve resolution 2018-79. I'll second. Roll call. Mrs. Florence Lynch? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Cole? Yes. Mr. Phelan? Yes. Okay, at this time I'd like to introduce Anna Brewer. Our new township manager starting June 1st. And Adam, if you have anything to say, go ahead. Well, first, I'd like to thank the governing body very much for the appointment and the confidence and the faith. I look forward to serving the Township of Connick with you. I look forward to meeting with the residents. Uh, it's a great opportunity to come work in a great community. So thank you all very, very much. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to go back. Uh, there are no presentations this evening. Uh, at this time, are there any reports or comments from any volunteers serving our community? Rudy. Okay, I want to report on the river cleanup we had this past Friday. We had a nice showing. We ended up with 70 people, which uh, considering the weather and uh, the things that people were at school was a great uh, showing, plus the fact that we've been very lucky. We haven't had a flood, so our um, amount of litter was fairly low at light. We ended up with uh, filling up a 20 cubic foot dumpster. And some of the areas that we had done were the Riverside area, which was part of Aquatic Park. Um, we did um, the park over uh, Rid uh, Ridgeline Park, I guess it is, near where you will live, uh, across from you. We picked up quite a bit of debris there. Uh, had hit Lehman Park with a little debris, uh, as well as the uh, park down at the other end of town uh, by the by the uh, VFW, not VFW, the um, I, think, uh, I guess it was called Aquatic Park, not Aquatic Park, um, the Hidden Cove. Hidden Cove. Uh, so we got a bunch of those and it worked out very well. Okay, Rudy. Well, we one, thank everyone for uh, their contribution. Just one thing, Rudy, you said it was Friday, it was actually Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. Oh, uh, that's sorry right. about that. It was Saturday. I just wanted to make sure everybody knew it was Saturday. It, it, it was a great turnout and Rudy, we'd like to thank you for all of your dedication and many, many years of leading that project. So thank you for all, all you do for that little wall cleanup. And Joe Wells. And Joe Wells, yes, Joe. Joe. Wells, yeah. Yeah. I also have to say that it, uh, we got a lot of help with the, the environmental, environmental Committee's project, and uh, open space was very, very helpful because they provided the uh, transportation for the vehicle. Great. Any other, uh, Tom? Thank you very much. Uh, I'd like to second those. Thanks to Rudy, he, did, he does an amazing job. Tom Andrea, 6 Elm Road, uh, Secretary of the Environmental Commission, and especially Frank and uh, Joe for their efforts in helping to finish up the cleanup. They transport a lot of the garbage at the end of the cleanup to the dumpster, which is very important. So it, it all goes very well. Thank you. 
Uh, there's a free trees coming up by the Environmental Commission in front of Town Hall on Saturday, April 28th, 9 to 1 p.m. We have 2,000 assorted tree saplings coming in. They're fairly small, but if you take care of them, they'll grow bigger and do well. But uh, it would be nice if residents took advantage of that. Thank you. Thank you. Joe? Joe Wells, 5 Washington Street. Uh, I just want to talk about two projects that we have uh, coming up, uh, also involving trees. On uh, the 14th, on Quantic Avenue, we're going to be doing an invasive species identification and removal. Uh, we'll, we'll have a team from the high school and other volunteers to uh, remove, identify and remove some invasives prior to our uh, the 21st. Uh, we're going to do a major tree planting on Pequannock Avenue. Uh, we have uh, a substantial number of trees and shrubs, and our intention there is it's a, a program. In fact, I, 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 if we uh, we could allow the gentleman is here from AmeriCorps that, that's involved with this program, if he could just speak to it for a second after I finish. Uh, but our main goal there is to stabilize the soil along the river uh, to uh, have trees absorbing uh, water and runoff uh, to prevent erosion and so forth and also take the Riverwalk section and give it a more park-like experience uh, with trees and shrubs that would beautify the area. Uh, we're looking for any volunteers for both the 14th and the 21st. Anybody who wants to come out and help us plant uh, a large number of trees that day would be welcome. Uh, and I've just got to digress back to the cleanup. Uh, so a lot of people on the council here that were busy bending over. How's everybody's back after that? Uh, <laughs> guys did a great job of cleaning up. I was going to say, I do have to tell you one thing. Um, not to scare people into doing future cleanups, but make sure you uh, bundle up and spray yourself. Uh, I ended up with a tick on the back of my neck. Oh, you did? And yeah. I didn't realize it until two days later. Um, well, I realized it, but I didn't realize it was still in there until two days later. So it's been taken care of, but uh, yeah, yeah no. I didn't even think when I walked out that day that I should have sprayed myself. So. Yeah, the ticks are always a problem. I've been working on the river walk for years, and ironically, I've never <laughs> gotten a tick there, but I did in my backyard. You know, but you always have to be cautious. Yeah. To spray and and obviously shower and, and yeah. check. I was uh, doing that. silly stuff though. I was like going under trees and yes. bending over. You were almost in the river. I know. Uh, you you I had know. a jug handle there. I was reading. All right, thank you, Joe. Let me just ask you a question. You said April fourteenth. That's this Saturday. Or yeah, April yeah. 14th? This this Saturday the fourteenth is going to be the invasive removal and identification. Uh, we're going to have uh, some kids from uh, the high school environmental group, uh, some people that are knowledgeable in, from the Open Space Committee, they're knowledgeable invasive species. What, what time's that starting? Uh, nine o'clock. Both where, are you, where are you meeting at nine? Yeah, uh, right in, we'll have some signage and so forth right along Pequannock Avenue, uh, primarily near the kiosk um, area. But uh, le let me let Adam speak to uh, yep. more about that. Okay. Adam Iakeo is the volunteer from the group. Hi. Um, I'm also a resident of Pequonic as well, um, 5 Dorothy Lane. Um, as Joe said, yeah, we're going to be doing um, invasive removal uh, this Saturday just to prepare the location for the tree planting. And then we'll be planting some native trees and shrubs um, in the area to help stabilize the soil, prevent erosion, and uh, hopefully improve air and water quality. Um, it's going to take some years to uh, make sure the trees actually grow well enough. So um, I will, along with the Open Space Committee, over the next couple years, we'll be checking up on, on the trees and the site, um, making sure everything's OK. Like. Um, controlling gra uh, the grass, so we'll be cutting the grass, um, we'll be watering the trees, so uh, we'll be handling um, the long-term maintenance. Um, and in addition to the tree planting, um, I am also working with the Quantic Space um, Environmental Committee, and we are having um, a rain barrel workshop um, right in the parking lot here in the town hall. Um, 
April 28th, same day as the they're handing out the tree saplings. So um, we'll be just cutting up, uh, cutting open some drums, um, plastic drums that were used um, to hold food and other other things. Um, and we'll be giving them out for free. So all you need to do is just show up, um, give me an email so I can reserve a barrel for you. Um, if you want one, uh, make sure you email me soon because we only have about 15 or 20, so we're gonna run out soon. Great. Um, so Adam, only 15 or 20 barrels you can get, is that it? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> for now at least. Um, been going back and forth between a lot of places about getting them for free. Um, but anyway, um, in addition to those events, we're al uh, also having a mini bio blitz with the Environmental Commission again on May 12th, which is a Saturday. Um, that will be at 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock. Um, and we'll just be walking around Woodland Lake um, identifying the animals that live in the area. So. Um, Hopefully, I can see some of you there. Um, any, anything else? So, Adam, let me ask you a question. Yeah. What's an invasive tree? Uh, so, invasive um, plants are plants that are not native um, to the to the area. So, uh, for bamboo? example, bamboo. Yeah, bamboo is. Um, well, bamboo is not native to the area. Um, I'm not sure whether it's invasive or non-native, so there's a difference between non-native and invasive. It's both. Yeah, so non-native means it's not from the area that, which it is currently inhabiting, um, and it doesn't necessarily hurt or benefit um, the environment that it's in. Whereas um, invasive um, is has a negative impact on the environment in which it is in. Any other questions? I mean, I'm just yeah, it's no, interesting no. because how do you yeah. point out what's right, what's wrong, mm -hmm. what's native, what's not native? Should I bring my chainsaw? <laughs> um, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think mm -hmm. we're going to be, be getting that uh, heavy duty there. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe some giant scissors or whatever they're called. <laughs> All right. Well, Adam, thank you for taking an interest in the community, and I've known Adam since probably third or fourth grade for youth from youth football. So, right. thanks for uh, taking an interest yeah. in the community. No problem. Thank you. Any other reports from volunteers? Okay. Um, the next item on the agenda is public comment. This public comment period will be limited to a total of thirty minutes. Any additional? Uh, an additional period of public comment is reserved later in the meeting. Individuals are requested to limit their questions and comments to three minutes. If anyone wishes to address the council, please wait to be recognized. Come to the microphone and provide your name and address for the record. Rudy. Rudy Steinfeld, 28 Libby, and I just want to address the um, vegetation pickup and the storm that we recently had. Uh, unfortunately, we had a lot of debris that fell. And um, I had heard from people there was no place for the people to deliver the debris, even on their own. If, uh, if they had a truck, we had no place to put it. Plus, the uh, pickup is limited to they take it either in a barrel or a bag. Uh, if you cut it up, even though it's in the three inches or four inch pieces, they won't pick it up. And uh, that's good news, bad news. Uh, if they would pick it up, it would mean a few more steps for them. If I put it in a, in a drum, or you put it in a drum, you end up, they are picking up a much heavier load and thereby leaving themselves in for injury. So I think we should revisit that to see that maybe they can pick they up. They will pick it up if it's in four foot sections and bundled. Well, even bundled it would become a problem because if you have four successions and you go for the, the four inch, bundling it will make it much heavier. If it's individually and just piled, it's easier just to throw it into the truck and uh, there's less chance of injury to the uh, people that are doing it. So I'm, I'm concerned most of, of the injury for the people that are doing it, even though they're, you know, they're not our employees, but you want, with back injuries the way it is, it might be an idea to pay, possibly think of, if it's piled up neatly, have them do it that way rather than bundling it if it's a site, if this is a four inch thing. It's just, an, if that was it. We, we discussed it as a, as a council but I'll let Mr. Holberg. Uh... Well, yeah, 
Yeah, shortly after the storm, we looked at different options to try and deal with the extra debris. Uh, our contractor, who does vegetative waste, uh, was able to provide us with additional days uh, before their normal starting date in April. Um, so we had essentially a week of them uh, going out there and picking up debris, but it had to be you know put at curbside in the standard either in a barrel or tied in four foot lengths. Um, yeah, and that's at their request. It's not something that we've kind of imposed on them, and that it is for their safety. And uh, you know the, the size of the barrels and the you know the bundling makes it just easier to handle and allows them to pick it up we did have a couple instances where you know some of those landscaping barrels are filled so full that they just become too heavy to pick up so there's the maximum weight limit also um, to, to do anything beyond that really requires different types of equipment we'd have to call in um, a contractor who's able to have some type of uh, chipper equipment and go from yeah, essentially up and down every street chipping uh, the debris. Uh, what we found is that most residents um, yeah, were thankful for the extra service that we provided. Uh, most complied with uh, you know the normal requirements of uh, bundling or putting in barrels and it's only a very small percentage that left um, you know loose branches out at curbside um, I quite honestly it, it would have been difficult to do anything more than what we actually did and it would have been a, a, a very costly service to start you know renting chippers or hire a company to start chipping material at curbside we we have one truck and one chipper and you know for the amount of town owned trees and town uh, trees that were down at town parks our guys are still probably doing that as a matter of fact i rode by riverside park and there was quite a few so if you can just bring that to dpw's attention riverside and we were still working at pv park to try and get that you know done and open by memorial day so yeah our guys were really just overwhelmed with the amount that we had to do so it's not like we could have assigned uh, municipal staff to try and do that we would have had to go outside unfortunately because of the large volume it's coming down <coughs> slowly but you got just so much you can put in a can and so it'll, you're going to see it uh, most likely for a couple of months until everyone catches up it's just the only reason I mentioned it was I even spoke to the guys there they have to pick up these heavy heavy uh, buckets and they say their boss tells them that uh, rather than being able to just pick up the things and throwing them in I, I, I threw them in myself and they were very happy they had no problem with it okay. any other Joe Get to you right after Nick. Uh, Joe Wells, 5 uh, Washington Street. Uh, just talking, uh, I had the unfortunate experience to see myself on the video from the last council meeting. And uh, I just wanted to apologize to the council. I got a little, uh, you know, I, I chastised the council, which was really not the right thing to do, and I just wanted to apologize for that. Not a so, problem. Nick? Nick Stefano, 28 Greenwood Ave, Pequonic. Um, uh, just kind of to go with Joe, what Joe was talking about, um, one of the things that uh, some of the people have been asking me about is, you know, some of these trees that fell down that are actually really street trees, and uh, people have them in front of their house, and it, it, is there a diameter of the branch, uh, you know, that we're kind of... Four feet. Four feet. So it could be, I it mean, could be no, a huge... No. No, diameter oh, is... Diameter. Four inches. Right. Okay, so nothing, nothing, nothing bigger than four nothing, inches right. for the vegetated waste got to pick. So and four foot, four foot, four right. foot length. Okay, so it's 
four inches of four yeah. foot. Okay, great. Um, the other thing is uh, also what Rudy was saying about some of these trees that are down, like especially um, where the uh, the drainage basin is uh, across on Greenwood Ave that leads the water back out to the brook. I mean, you got a couple big trees that are totally flipped over, and it's and it's it's doing some blockage. So I don't know if uh, you know, j just so you guys are aware of it, because there's two big ones that are down. The one tree is probably not that big of an issue because it actually ripped up a bunch of the ground that actually kind of probably opened a little bit of that space. So that might actually be helpful, but it also blocks the, the far end of it. So, you know, that's a concern, especially in, you know, in the next weeks. Yeah, we, we're aware of, you know, trees like that along the, um, the, the ditch that runs along the Newark Aqueduct and even other areas through Lyman Park and, um, you know, even the uh, streams that run through uh, Village. Um, yeah, our, our guys have been working essentially nonstop. Like we have one tree crew. Um, you know, our first priority was to get roads opened and make sure that all our municipal facilities were safe and accessible. Uh, we're in the process of going through all the parks to make sure that they're safe. Um, and we will get to all of those areas that are not quite as accessible, but we know they're down and we'll get to them. Okay. Uh, the other issue uh, that uh, some neighbors brought to my attention, which I talked to Joe about, and he kind of agrees, uh, the speed at which the cars are going down Paquanic Avenue. Um, when you come off 23, uh, shortly after you get around that first bend, you do have one speed limit sign, but that whole rest of the length where the cars are really picking up speed, and, you know, I'm just going for the river walk, and you really got to be paying attention you know when you're going down uh, because everybody's using that as a, as a shortcut you know they're cutting through there and they're not even slowing down and you really have to be paying attention like probably twice in the last seven or eight days like I really had to kind of get over to get out of the way of some of these cars so um, I don't know if we could find a way to put like you know some caution signs further down where Shady Brook goes underneath the Quantic Ave because by the time they get to that bend where the cars are on both sides uh, houses are on both sides of the street they're really flying and I mean even the other day where I saw him uh, Joe showing uh, the, uh, uh, the, the the weeds and stuff that were across the street I mean it's definitely it's definitely a danger over there so I don't know if a speed bump or something we do have Cars down. We do have the digital uh, por uh, portable mm -hmm. digital speed limit signs. Yeah, that says your speed is, and it gives the speed limit yeah. right underneath it. So maybe we can ask traffic to move one. Over yeah, to like maybe one cab. of the yeah. those, uh, one I'll of those ask, spots yeah. where you know you just got open space. We'll have traffic safety do a survey there, see um, you know, yeah, what, was what the speeds are, and if the speed limit signs are readable, and you know. If yeah, because it was brought to my attention a couple of weeks ago, and it's like, oh, I, you know, because I run down that way. But it wasn't until, you know, my wife had surgery where, you know, we're doing rehabilitation where I'm walking it every day that I really notice. I'm like, whoa, this is definitely, definitely a danger, you know, and that's for us paying attention. I can't imagine even some of the, some of those kids over there because it's, it's definitely gotten worse over the last year or two. And it's unfortunate because it's a, there's a lot of streets in town that have that same issue. Yeah, it's, it's not just it's, the quantic. We heard walking around another street, too. Right? Oh, it's terrible. Yeah, yeah. And it's all the people that live here. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thanks. Thank you. Well, Any other little. comments from the public? Okay, there being no additional public comment, we'll continue with the agenda. <laughs> Next on the agenda is Public Hearing Ordinance 2018-02. Ms. Marsh. Ordinance number 2018-02 is an ordinance to exceed the municipal budget appropriation limits and to establish a cap bank in accordance with NJSA 40A colon 4-45.14. Are there any comments from council? Nope. 
is there here. is there a motion to open the public hearing i'll make that motion is there a second i'll, I'll second. second all in favor aye. aye if anyone from the audience has questions or comments on this ordinance please come to the microphone identify yourself for the record Okay, is there a motion to close the public hearing? I'll make that motion. Second. Is there a second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Is there a motion to adopt this ordinance? I'll make a motion to adopt ordinance 2018-02. Is there a second? I'll second it. Roll call, please. Mrs. Florence Lynch? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Cole? Yes. Mr. Phelan? Yes. Okay, next on the agenda is public hearing ordinance 2018-03. Ms. Marsh. This is an ordinance authorizing a special emergency appropriation under NJSA 48 colon 4-53 for preparation of a, revi a revision and codification of ordinances in and by the Township of Aquanic in the County of Morris, New Jersey. Are there any comments from Council? Nope. No, we talked about this last time, yep. and so we can do the master plan. Is there a motion to open the public hearing? I'll make that motion. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. If anyone from the audience has any question or comments on this ordinance, please come to the microphone and identify yourself for the record. Is there a motion to close the public hearing? I'll make that motion. Is there a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Is there a motion to adopt this ordinance? I'll make that motion to adopt ordinance number 2018-03. Is there a second? I'll second it. Roll call, please. Mrs. Florence Lynch? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Cole? Yes. Mr. Phelan? Yes. Next on the agenda is public hearing ordinance number 2018-04, Ms. Marsh. This is an ordinance authorizing a special emergency appropriation under NJSA 48 colon 4-53 for engagement of a special consultant for the preparation of a master plan in order to update the plan in accordance with the law in and by the Township of Aquanic in the County of Morris, New Jersey. And that would be consultant or consultants. Okay. Are there any comments from Council? No, we spoke about this one as well. Yep. Is there a motion to open the public hearing? I'll make a motion to open the public hearing. Yes. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. If anyone from the audience has any questions or comments on this ordinance, please come to the microphone and identify yourself for the record. Okay, is there a motion to close the public hearing? I'll make that motion. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Is there a motion to adopt this ordinance? I'll make a motion to adopt ordinance 2018-04. Is there a second? Second. Roll call, please. Mrs. Florence Lynch? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Cole? Yes. Mr. Phelan? Yes. Next on the agenda is public hearing ordinance number 2018-05, Ms. Marsh. Ordinance number 2018-05 is an ordinance authorizing a special emergency appropriation under NJSA 40A colon 4-53 for preparation and execution of a revaluation of real property and an update thereto in and by the Township of Aquanic in the County of Morris, New Jersey. Are there any comments from Council? No, we talked about this last time too. Is there a motion to open the public hearing? I'll make that motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 If anyone from the audience has any questions or comments on this ordinance, please come to the microphone and identify yourself for the record. Tom. Thank you. Uh, just a quick question. Re-evaluation of real property, does that mean the entire township or just a certain section? No, it would mean the entire town, but we have no intention of doing it imminently. This is to uh, set up the funding mechanism to do it at some point in the future. Um, and uh, the reason we're doing it now is because as a result of a settlement of a, a tax bill, a rather large tax bill, uh -huh. uh, we ended up with a settlement that's going to cause uh, the assessment on some properties to reduce over the next couple of years. Uh, we really want to ensure that um, at some point in time in the relatively near future, uh, all properties are looked at and put on an equalized basis to make sure that everyone paying a fair amount um, so it's kind of a placeholder to make sure that uh, revaluation isn't left to you know the normal circumstances that might lead to one um, while the normal practice is do one every 10 years or so uh, there are certain uh, criteria that need to be met um, before the county actually orders you to do one 
Um, so as a result of kind of the, the way uh, our assessments have or will be set up over the next couple of years, uh, we want there to be kind of a tickler out there that this needs to get done uh, in the four to five year time frame. Are, are we reserving money for it? Are and they're sure? right. Yes. This also we puts money aside, which we actually have uh, this year, which is not impacting our tax rate at all. Right. And when do you think we'll do this reevaluation? 2001? I believe that we should be doing it uh, around 2022, effective for 2023. There you go, Tom. You got all your answers. Thank right? you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone else? Is there a motion to close the public hearing? I want to make that motion to close. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Is there a motion to adopt the ordinance? I'll make that motion to adopt ordinance <laughs> number 2018-05. No, Is there I'll a second? second. Okay. Oh, sorry. So I'll second. Roll call, please. Mrs. Florence Lynch? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Cole? Yes. Mr. Phelan? Yes. Next on the agenda is uh, ordinance for introductions, and we have no ordinance scheduled for introduction at this time. Next on the agenda is items for resolution. Ms. Marsh. For consideration this evening, beginning with R-2018-76, authorizing tax office refunds, overpayments, or cancellations. 2018-77, authorizing release of designated escrow deposits. 2018-78, authorizing self-examination of the municipal budget for the year 2018. R-2018-80, authorizing execution of a cooperative pricing agreement with the New Jersey Cooperative Purchasing Alliance. 2018-81, approving the designated special event permit applications, and that's for the Paquanic Street Fair. And 2018-82, approving payment of the itemized claims as set forth on the April 6, 2018 bill list. Thank you. Are there any comments on the resolution from council? Yes, I, Dave, I just want to ask on 78, authorizing self-examination of the municipal budget. <laughs> I'm going to ask that, that too. Um, <laughs> yeah, it looks good. <laughs> many years ago, um, it used to be every municipality has spent their budget to the state. Uh, the state would review every budget and provide comments, and you had to get their permission before you actually adopted. Um, when the state started cutting back on personnel at the division did this that became problematic to get that done in a timely fashion so they came up with the process where they only actually review uh, each town's budget in detail every third year okay. and you're put into a group or group A um, we are not in the group that gets full review this year um, but as part of that process the governing body has to authorize that we examine the budget ourselves and really go through um, the, the same things they would do to make sure that our budget meets the statutory requirements that we haven't exceeded the cap um, that we have sufficient money to pay our debt service um, you know that all the legal requirements for the budget are met um, CFO signs off on that uh, and we ship the budget to the state they do a cursory review and give us permission to adopt after that okay so that leads to the next question when does this have to be done by before we adopt okay and when, when do you think we're gonna adopt? Um, on our normal calendar we will have the budget hearing at our next meeting on the 24th mm -hmm. and we would adopt on May 8th. 8th. Okay. Before June 1st. Yes. Okay. Correct. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, that's it. That's all I have. Any other comments? I believe nope. Now, the only other thing I was going to say, I know we um, have the street festival on here, and I understand everything's been worked out with the uh, stage being moved as well, right? Where yes, apparently the... Um, plans to move the stage were made before, before the, the objection okay. to so right that's what that I all heard. seems to work, work out, out. Good. beautiful very good cool. nothing else Ryan any councilman heard any? no that was it okay <clears throat> is there a motion to adopt these resolutions I'll, I'll make, make a, a mo motion to go ahead sorry I'll, I'll tell you what I'll do the first three you do the second three <laughs> go, ahead. Go, ahead. Mm -hmm. go ahead I'll make a motion to adopt <coughs> 2018 76 77 and 78 <laughs> Oh, second. Oh, you want me to go ahead and say? Just, no, no, just no. do them all, Rich. Do, okay. do them all, Rich. Do them all. 80, 81, and 82. <laughs> Melissa, second. you can do the second. Okay. That's uh, roll call, please. Mrs. Florence Lynch? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Cole? Yes. Mr. Phelan? Yes. Next item on the agenda are items for discussion. 
Um, yeah, didn't we, yeah, we started talking about this last meeting. Yeah. yeah. We uh, we're, we're gonna we're gonna hold we're gonna hold this one until pending a planning board review because they haven't had a chance to review that. Is that the reason we pulled it out as a discussion because of the planning yeah, board? Right. They, they do have to review it. Yeah. Um, we did receive a comment back from Jill um, asking that we also amend the um, uh, the part of the ordinance that the identifies where on the property the right. storage unit can be. Right. Um, so rather than reintroducing and then send it to the planning board, uh, we're going to have them make that part of their comments back to us and we'll incorporate that into uh, the ordinance that we finally adopt. Makes sense. Okay. So their next meeting is next Monday, I believe. Okay. So I think we should have it for the 24th. Uh, uh, You're sending it to them for when? Um, well, their meeting is Monday. Monday. Yeah. Okay. And they said okay. they would, so we could reintroduce it at the next meeting. Okay. Okay. Very good. All right. So that the item for discussion is on hold for now. Next item on the agenda is reports and notices. Are there any comments from council on the reports? Not at this time. Okay. Uh, next item on the agenda is the manager's report. Mr. Holberg. Okay, the Mountain Ave West Parkway water main project is more than half done. Uh, the tank can be painted now that concrete has cured and weather is warming. We have a couple different options for the name logo on the tank. We can do name only, we can do logo only, which would be our, our township seal or crest. Um, <clears throat> we can do the township name and crest, but it'll only fit on the side of the tank that faces 287, if we want to do that. Uh, or we can do a panther paw along with the name. Um, the other option is to put a panther paw on the roof of the tank so it can be seen from the air and it would be part of uh, Google Earth type um, you know, scenarios. Can we put the town name Google's and app. the panther paw yeah. on top? Yeah. yeah. Cool. They won't both fit on top. I like, I like the panther paw and the town name on the side. Okay. Anybody so else? Any other uh, comment? Looking for some so what about feedback. Putting I the definitely want the town top. name on there, but well, I'm wondering if there's a way you can do the thing on the top. And Why can't you put the panther paw on the top, the town name on, right. on the, the is, side? Is there an, With the crest. an additional expense for that? <laughs> yeah, but that was the next question, Dave. <laughs> can, you have, can, you, can you manage to get all three on there? <laughs> we could do the yeah, panther paw on the top and the name and seal on the side. Yeah. Right. There is a little more expense, but I mean, uh, it's right. going to be there for 100 good. years, so. Yeah. <laughs> do that good. then. I'm okay so I like that. that. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. All right. All right. So we need Panther Paul on the top. Right? That's kind of cool. Panther Paul. Blue and gold. It's got to be the correct colors, correct? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Just, um, Just make sure it's it's green, bay, gold, oh, yeah. and it's navy. Fear the paw. Yeah. Fear right. the paw. So Panther Paul on the top, name and crest on the side. Yes. Perfect. Okay. Anything else on? Let's make sure it's the right it. color. Um, see, bids for Mountain Avenue reconstruction will be open next week. And the following activities over the next couple months are listed. Okay, next item on the agenda is council reports and announcements. Councilwoman Florence Lynch. All right, a couple things. Uh, the Economic Development uh, Committee met. Uh, the town planner came in and met with the group and talked about uh, her role with the town. And we discussed how the group can provide input and suggestions to the council. Uh, for the planning um, board to review. Uh, suggestions were made to some of the use regulations in the community business districts and commercial highway locations. And um, some of those were uh, things that our planner was working on anyway. So I believe there's a list of uh, some changes that were going in front of the planning board. Um, and some discussions that centered around future business development as well. So it was a good meeting. Um, let's see. The council, the chamber, and the economic development committee attended two ribbon cuttings last Saturday. One was a company called Bellis, a skincare company uh, located at One Manor Avenue. Um, and I was happy to see uh, they also joined the chamber. And I went to the chamber meeting this afternoon, and um, the owner of that business was there already. Um, we also gave her some information about our tax reward program, which she plans on um, uh, on getting 
possibly joining that. Uh, the other one that we went to was Creative Trends Studio, and they're located at 163 Newark Pompton Turnpike, and that was a nice uh, grand opening as well. Um, there's another ribbon cutting scheduled for this Saturday, no, next Saturday. This Saturday. This Saturday, April 14th at 12, um, and that is... Um, Ooh, I forgot to write down the name of the company. What's the name of the company? They're also skin products. It's, it's, a, it's another skin care product company. They're located at 631 Route 23 South in Pompton Plains. Uh, the owner is Carol Hassashi. Uh, so all are welcome to, the, to come to that ribbon cutting. What time was that again, Melissa? 12 o'clock this Saturday. All right. Um, Let's see what else. Oh, and I, I was just going to say, Louise uh, brought to my attention uh, in your email that the town of Newark just, Newark. This, I'm sorry, the city of Newark just joined the property uh, tax rewards program that we're in. So that was interesting. Um, I went to the Chamber of Commerce luncheon today. They had a nice turnout. Um, they're really... Um, you know, uh, geared up to, to to really try to help. They want to work with the town in in any capacity that they can. Um, they had a nice turnout there, so um, they they've been getting some input from business owners, and and uh, they'll pass that along to the council at some point and the EDC. Uh, what else? Everyone saw the, um, we have to sign up for that mental health first aid course. Everybody knows that's set for Saturday, May 5th from 9 to 5. And um, the place is still to be determined. I don't sure. think, is it here? Did they come up with here? Okay. And I sent that along to uh, Debbie Maynard, the director of the library, um, because I know that some of them want to join. So as soon as we get to 20, we're done. Um, what else? Uh, this past Sunday morning, I just wanted to tell you that um, our, our, our uh, volunteer group of geese egg addlers, addling, went out uh, looking for um, uh, the nests, but they didn't find any. So they said, but the day wasn't a total waste because they brought garbage cans and they picked yeah. up uh, lots, of, you know, we picked up garbage. Five bags yeah. Garbage yeah. So they went out there and that was good news. They didn't find any nests. And other than that, I think I'm good. The only other thing I wanted to bring up, I don't know if you all saw the um, the flyer and letter that came from uh, Congressman Rodney Friedlandheisen's uh, office. Um, but this is a flyer um, to get passed out among the community on Monday, May 14th from 7 to 9 p.m. There is going to be, uh, it's called the, the U.S. Service Academy Night. It's at the Montville Township High School. Um, and um, it's going to be an opportunity to invite members of the community from all the surrounding communities um, to go for an informative meeting, um, hands-on opportunity to meet with representatives from all five academies uh, for military, West Point, uh, the Naval Academy, Air Force, Coast Guard, Merchant Marine. So. Um, Students, um, whether you're a graduate, undergraduate, um, they'll be available to speak one-on-one -on -one with students. So I want to find a way to get, I don't know if this flyer has been um, circulated to the schools, but I think it would be uh, beneficial to do that. So how do we get that done? Through Carol or your office? I can send it to the schools. Yeah. You saw that, right? Come through? Yeah. Yeah. So let's get that to um, the schools, because it does say it's I'm pretty sure they sent it to the schools, but I'll yeah. make sure. Okay. That's it. That's it. Councilman Hurd? Yes. Open space committee meeting was last night. I heard about a tree planning. <laughs> they already said it five times. But uh, hey, listen, it's Saturday, April 21st, 9 a.m. Meet on Pequannock Ave. I'm sure you'll see a bunch of people there, and we need as many hands as we can get. So we have a few thousand trees that we're planting, correct? No, we're not, not quite that. Um, <laughs> a lot of trees. <laughs> a lot of trees, and we need a lot of hands. Uh, let's see. I put this in front of everybody, uh, the map. It was a last-minute thing that came up. Uh, from Frank Pinto in our meeting. 
I'm probably going to mess this up, but I'm going to take a jab at it. The yellow portion is Mountainside Park. That's what we own. Uh, the state wants to buy the green portion, uh, but it's pending on whether or not we allow mountain biking through Mountainside Park because their idea is the red portion to start mountain biking up there, go through our area to get to the green area. If we don't allow mountain, mountain biking, they will not buy the green area. Did I get that right, Joe? Yeah. There you go. So are we restricting mountain biking? That's the question. Do we restrict mountain biking? I don't remember that ordinance. Yeah. That's why I'm asking. I don't believe we currently do restrict it. Um, we restrict motorized. Correct. correct. Uh -huh. But not mountain. Now, with motorized, that doesn't mean that our... Um, who are we talking ranger, about? Ranger. ranger. Can, our ranger can still yes, be on sure. a quad and go uh, through. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So can our police. And our police, right. And okay. our fire. And fire and, and first aid. ambulance. That's why we got that. EPW. I don't so uh, presuming that we don't have any issues with the ordinance, they could then move on with uh, acquiring the property. Right. But here's where the problem's going to come in. They're going to want something in writing, I'm sure. Absolutely. I guarantee it. Uh, Resolution. And our, I don't believe there's any mountain bike trails there mm -hmm. now. Oh, yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, so are there are? May I comment? Uh, uh, sure. Might as well come out. Yeah. Right up and state your name. He was there. Address for the record. <laughs> <laughs> Joe Wells, 5 Washington Street. Um, a, uh, the, there isn't anything in the regulation that prohibits mountain biking, but I don't believe, Dave, there's anything that says it is. It's not tacitly. Right. Right. Yeah. They're going right. to want right. something before they purchase that, I'm sure. Uh, well, <coughs> Yes, uh, they might, but we're going to have a meeting with uh, the Morris County Parks to, to uh, discuss the particulars of it. There's, uh, there's area, it's, a, it's part of a large Wagon on Mountain trail system that they want to see if they can connect into our mountainside park. It is already a very popular mountain biking area. Uh, there's quite a bit of people that mountain bike there. It's very challenging. I hike there. I don't mountain bike there, <laughs> but uh, it is a difficult area. Now, to go to the property that they're looking at, uh, Dave will remember this property was offered to the town, and we looked at it. It's in R Riverdale, and it's not something that uh, really would be beneficial to the town. But uh, the, we, we turned it over to the county to see if they would be interested in it and they're now coming back and saying they would be interested if a we would Real permit mountain biking uh, i do see a, a, a logistical problem the property is on the south side of uh, southeast side of route 287 and how to connect to our trails uh, i find that it's, it looks like it might be a difficult situation but uh, they do have a large section of property to the west of 287 that also borders. They adjoin our properties on the north side of 287 below uh, Sawmill Pond and Uttermeyer Lake there, and then continues on. And it would be a great thing because it does eventually join Pyramid Mountain, which is a well-used park, uh, a Mars County Park also. Any questions on it from the council? And it's called uh, Wa Waha Mountain Greenway. Waha. Say that three times. It's one of those Indian. I guess that my like, question would be: Are are there going to be designated bike trails, or uh, will bikes be permitted essentially everywhere? Because some of the trails that we have in Mountainside mm -hmm. are not large enough to really accommodate both bikes and hikers, and I'd hate to be on the downside of you know hiking when a yeah. bike is coming down on some of the you know. And can you restrict trails. it on certain trails? So uh, if we can identify a, a couple of routes that are, you know, through routes through the park. Yeah, like the main pipe. Right. You know, right above the pipe. Yeah, That's the pipe wide line, enough, and, plenty and of maybe, room. You know, 
you know, yellow trail or whatever that kind of parallels it yeah. up the mountain. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's going to really uh, require uh, some on-site review by both the county and, and representatives of the town to determine that. They do currently use virtually all the trails for mountain biking now. Uh, and uh, there's uh, also, a, it, we've expanded Mountainside Park recently, uh, almost doubling the trail area uh, using the property that's uh, on what would be the west side of the gas pipeline area. Mm -hmm. And so there, there's a lot of trails in there. Uh, they're more conducive to mountain biking than the trails that are on the other, on the east side of the pipeline. It's, it's not as uh, hilly and rocky as the other sections. But it's going to basically, the answer to all the questions are going to be on-site review by members of the town and, and the county in coming to an agreement. But we don't have any specific restriction. Now, I don't think the county is actually looking for anything more than us saying that I don't think we need a resolution for them, but I'll, I'll determine that when we talk to them. Okay? So Thank you'll you. find out and bring it back. Yes. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, let's see, other than that, we have a flood meeting on this Thursday, 7.30 here. And we have Municipal Alliance Committee, which would be tomorrow at 4.30 at the high school. Sure. And my only other question is up Mountain Ave. Are we painting those red fire hydrants? No. Oh, well, um, yeah. some of the fire hydrants are new. Oh, new. Yeah. Yeah. The, the new ones will get painted to be to match blue and gold. Blue and gold. The, there are red ones on the north side that designate the fact that those hydrants are not part of our municipal system. They're directly off the Newark main. So that's why there's some have the blue and gold and the red one next to it, the, and the others are new ones up Well, the, um, the new ones that have been installed, um, the, the new brand new ones are red. And when the old ones are taken out of service, they'll be removed and we'll paint the new one. Got it. To be our color. But there are a couple of hydrants on mountain. Um, they're mostly on the other side uh, than our service hydrants. Um, they attach to the line that connects uh, the Newark Aqueduct to our blending facility. Okay. Uh, and we keep in different colors so the fire department oh, fire understand department that recognizes, they're different. yes, that they're on different means. Uh, and and let's say not blue and gold, <coughs> let's say maybe powder blue and yellow. <laughs> yeah, when are we going to change those colors? <laughs> I thought it was going to be the not blue and gold. Blue and gold. Yeah. It's safety yeah. blue and safety yellow. All right, let's yeah. just make sure that the blue and gold on the water tower is different. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Still reminds me of this smirk. Other than that, that's all I have. Yeah. Councilman Phelan. Company one, fire company number one had their meeting on Friday. Company two has their meeting this Thursday. At that time, I'll get an update on when their new fire truck will be here. Mm. Um, but I think it's supposed to be here during the summer. The chassis this year? was delivered within the past three or four weeks. Yeah. Exciting. So they're making progress on that. And then that's it. I'll let you guys know when the new fire truck will be here. All right. Okay. Unfortunately, I have a baseball game. Uh, my high school umpiring season has started, so this Saturday I have a game at 11 in Mil Milburn, so I won't be able to join in the festivities. Um, speaking of baseball, uh, we did have Dave Holberg, myself, and Pete Coriel had a meeting on March 28th with the Little League executives and uh, the issue for this year has been resolved. Everyone that has played on Washington Park Field 1 last year will be playing on Washington Park Field 1 again for this year. Um, and we have some, we, we talked about some other things that uh, for the following season. Uh, for those that don't know, PBA Local 172, our police department's having a classic car show at PV Park on April 28th from 10 to 4. Rain date is May 12th. Um, so if you have any cars that you want to enter, you can uh, do that by contacting, I believe it's Kevin Ricciardi, I think that's doing that, but you can probably call any the police desk and they'll put you to the right person. Um, Parks and Rec met a week ago this past Monday, um, and a comment came up about a volunteer barbecue uh, info for all of the committees that we have and each committee presenting a three-minute um, 
quick uh, overview of what they are doing in their committee so this way all of our committees are up to date and up to speed on um, what all of the committees are involved in they thought maybe you know doing a, a, a hamburger hot dog thing you know and, and allowing each committee to make a three-minute presentation I told them that I would bring that up I thought it was a good idea um, maybe we can even do it before June 30th and we can have Dave flipping and grilling hot dogs I would second that <laughs> yeah so uh, I think it's a great idea so maybe we should definitely look into that day right um, Uh, first aid squad met last night uh, for the month of March. They had 59 calls and six calls at Cedar Crest. Um, and they're very happy that we approved the two new power stretchers in our budget this year. So they wanted to know when they thought that they could place the order. <laughs> June. <laughs> okay. Um, other than that, uh, that's all I have. I mean, you know, Dave. Uh, myself and Joe Wells met with some Morris County Parks and Parks Committee people. Kathy was on the phone uh, regarding the new trail that's going in the back and some uh, people that have encroached uh, onto the railroad property. So they really wanted us to be notified about the properties that were encroaching. So uh, the railroad will be sending out letters and they wanted us to know just in case that we heard anything about the letters that went out so mm -hmm. nothing major uh, uh, you know some things that were you know, a little, we little bigger than others but nothing really crazy yeah, what about the update, I, I met with the historical society uh, last week and I advised them they were encroaching on the trail and so they're, 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 <laughs> they're gonna move the museum yeah they have to right. <laughs> Did you ever find out about the trees, the, the whole story on the trees, the water? The, I, I talked to the engineer at the water, what is it, the one North, North Jersey Water. North Jersey Water. Yep. Uh, they have two 72-inch pipes that run along the right. back. No, and they that's a different line. The, the one along the railroad is the 102-inch Wanakew South. Okay, there's, so two, there's two of them or one? No, just one. Just one. He told me so there's two. It's a nine-foot diameter pipe. Um, and the area that uh, Mrs. John had called about, the pipe runs on the west side of the railroad for most of the length of the railroad. Right. It crosses and it, it kind of goes diagonally. So uh, when they were clearing their right of way immediately above the pipe, and they clear a, a 30 foot area to cover their pipe and about 10 feet on either side. Um, it's a wider area immediately behind her house because the pipe is now going diagonally right. across to the east side of the railroad. But it's their property. It Not is. Yeah. It is um, railroad property which the district has an easement to right. and the pipeline is underneath. They, they ended up crossing there because of the thorium spill that was along the railroad that siding dangerous. and was not cleaned up. Thorium? Not, yes, thorium. But right behind sure the house I grew up. Yeah, okay. <laughs> That's why I glow. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it, it, crossed, <laughs> it, it crossed over starting around 15 Elm Road. <clears throat> ran on the east side of the railroad from from there to Jackson Avenue where it crossed back over. So when you're looking out the, the rear of those couple houses, 15 and 17 Elm, it looks like a very wide swath because of the diagonal way the pipe ran. Yeah. They just don't like seeing feet on their property. He told me they have 15 feet on each side to clear. They have no intentions on putting anything back because the roots get into the piping system and causes leaks and everything else. So. Okay, but it's their property and they yeah. can do what they want. Right. Their yes. property is the bottom line. Yeah. Um, that's all I had. Anything else, Rich? No. <laughs> Uh, next on the agenda is public comment. If anyone wishes to address the council, please wait to be recognized. Come to the microphone and provide your name and address for the record. Jordan. Jordan Galliano, 10 Ave. 
Um, it was nice to see uh, many of you at the river cleanup this weekend, and Melissa, I also found a tick on me. Uh, I had to pull it off and go to the doctors and get it checked out. Um, funny, the thorium, we actually got tested on my street as well, back out of years ago. So we have thorium and ticks. We want some. Mm. Um, <laughs> I love ticks. Yeah. Uh, a few comments I want to make. Um, there was an article that just came out uh, by the New York Times about skateboarding in uh, the United States and everything. And uh, one of the individuals that they interviewed in that article, Steve Rodriguez, owner of Fibro Skateboard uh, Skateboards in New York City, and he's also helped develop multiple skate parks in New York City, like LES uh, Coleman Playground Skate Park under the Manhattan Bridge, also known as LES Skate Park, uh, Astoria Skate Park, Tribeca Skate Park, many skate parks throughout the area. And I was able to speak with him last week, and in regards to what he had to do with working with uh, the city of New York and other surrounding. Uh, municipalities that um, in order to get uh, to do large-scale fundraising, this is what he said, um, to do large-scale fundraising, there has to be buy-in from the community. So the council has to either vote on a resolution or write a letter to give to the, the governing nonprofits to run fundraising, um, because that way it shows buy-in from the community to do it. Um, so then when I asked if a resolution is better than a letter, he said it depends on what the town wants to do. And since, uh, like Mr. Rootstex said, that uh, a letter and a resolution is non-binding. Um, but he also did mention that with working with New York City, since everything's official and a lot of red tape, that with um, complying with getting something done, resolution is preferable. Um, but we're not New York City, and depending on what council wants to do with a letter or a resolution, uh, either is fine. Um, and another thing I want to mention, too, was uh, we had skateboard lessons begin on the 7th? No, uh, last week was closed uh, for Easter break, uh, the 28th. I can't remember the exact dates, um, but we had 16 kids sign up, and um, when we got there, the day of lessons, we were informed that the park ranger um, is no longer on staff. I'm sure you all know about that, and I didn't know that going into the lessons. So we had to scramble and uh, draw up a sign, park our cars to block off the entrance to Greenview, because when we did the lesson last year, uh, the ranger had to block off the area. and. Um, that was a little unsettling because we had to do something to make the area safe. And for a lot of people that are talking about this topic online and uh, debating the issue, um, and a lot of people saying like, oh, the kids, they had so much fun, look at how much fun they're having in just an open parking lot and we should just do that. That's not a skate park. That's not adequate for, for youth to come together and socialize and to create a community and do something. Because what if we weren't doing lessons and a bunch of kids were there, and there was baseball or a tennis match going on and people were driving through there. I've seen people drive through there and do burnouts in the parking lot, just going on a walk or riding my bike. And it's dangerous. That's not that's inadequate for 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 young kids to be gathering to be learning something. And um, I know I keep pitching it, but I mean, if we want to have kids safe in this community, we have to have the dedicated facilities for them to participate in these activities because we don't want to have any kid get injured and participating in something that they appreciate. And um, also with the 13 kids that um, people are saying are from town, they're doing lessons. It's just kids that are interested in lessons. There's kids in this community that are interested in skateboarding, but they don't have the means to participate in skateboarding because there's no facility. They don't have a skateboarder. They don't have um, any direction of where to go. And by us implementing this facility, then it brings in more attention and more interest for the youth to want to participate in something that they might not have the means to do because there is no facility. And there's plenty of people in this town that I know that skateboard and just by people online saying that it's only a handful of people that are doing it, it's a lie because for the four times that I've been doing lessons uh, with this round, I think it's over 50 different kids just in town that have been interested in lessons. Just interested in lessons, not skateboarding. There's plenty of other kids that are interested in skateboarding and yada yada, I can keep going on and on, but uh, those are just comments that I just want to make. Can we ask a question? What did, I thought we had two uh, park rangers. Yeah, one. One resigned. One, one resigned. 
Just recently? Yes. Okay. Yeah, it was, yeah, we had to make a sign and put it up and block everything. And I mean, yeah, it's unnerving to know that there's no protection for kids in parking lots and stuff. So that's it. Thank you. So we are looking for a park ranger. If anybody wants to be a park ranger. <laughs> Sorry, I'm already on. <laughs> Any other comments from the public? No. Uh, there are no minutes for approval this evening. Next on the agenda, and we do have uh, items for closed session, so we're going into closed session. I'll make that. Sorry, motion. Bob, we're, we're going into closed session. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make nice a motion. You, Bob. <laughs> make a motion to go into closed session. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.